Greetings, unsettled souls. Go! Sam I be the doing political commentary. Welcome to the correct views. You might know me from blasting news. Uh, if you do, as uh, people will always trickle in late here, although I don't even know if the live feed is at this time working. <clears throat> I am going to be yeah, I don't know where I this. I am going to be I'm actually going to be covering Judas Priest on September the... I forget the day, but it's in Youngstown. Um, I've been blessed with um, concert tickets, uh, press passes, to see Priest twice. And I'm being sent to the show in Youngstown. I was supposed to go last year. It's their 50-year anniversary, and I'm going to be covering that. And I have fired off questions. To who many people consider to be the greatest European daredevil of all time, Eddie Kidd. Um, he was popular around the time of that second wave after uh, Doug Danger and, of course, Evil Knievel. Uh, he was racing, I should say, stunting around the time that Robbie was. He, his chin hit his gas tank. Get, get this, his, his chin hit the gas tank. And his bike was so well maintained by him and his crew. And his his muscle memory was so precise. You guys have seen him in James Bond movies. He, he was in uh, Goldeneye. He did the bike jump for that movie. <clears throat> when he knocked himself out, he stayed on his bike and went up a 20-foot embankment and unfortunately fell down. And uh, was paralyzed and could not speak very well today. And I've sent some questions to him. We're not just going to talk about his crashes. He has some amazing jumps. He jumped the Great Wall of China. Anyway, look for that. I will be in blasting news. I have, uh, I don't know when the questions are going to be coming back, but it's already pre-approved and will be going up. All right, guys, you went dumdies. I got dumdies for you. I was so angry when I heard what I'm about to tell you about that I, I nearly could not speak. I mean, the level of anger that I had was almost unspeakable. So much so that I'm going to say, if at any point in this show, and I think I have a time or two, my go-to charity is either uh, Chuck Swindoll Ministries or... Um, uh, St. Jude's. <clears throat> I donate to both uh, once a year. <clears throat> if I've ever supported the Make-A-Wish Foundation, I wish very much to clarify that I no longer do. At all. In any way, shape, matter, or form. Listen to this. According to a, a, a number of sources, I know that this was on uh, Drudge for a moment. Uh, and I don't, I don't remember the source that he was aggregating, but the Make-A-Wish Foundation will not be granting wishes to dying children unless they and their entire family has been vaccinated with COVID-19 vaccine, which I, it's a poisonous poke. Um, I can't say who, I don't think she wants her name tossed out there, but somebody I know very well had all kinds of issues after they had the shot, and it was questions about their heart. But I'm going to say something here, that even if you're a fan of the vaccine, you will end up agreeing that you don't want anything to do with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Even if you are pro-vaccine, and the only reason that this didn't win the dunce cap of the month was because it's more cruel and uh, just outright sadistically cruel and short-sighted, I should say. It's a short-sighted cruelty that makes the stupidity of it not as funny. <clears throat> and this is what I was saying. Even if you are pro-poke, as it were, you didn't realize that a lot of people are like dying children they can't get vaccines. They, they can't add anything to their system. It doesn't matter what it is. Some of them can't even get vitamin C injections because the body can't process it. They're dying. 
they cannot get the vaccine. Many of their immediate family can't get the vaccine. What if they have a history of heart problems? And uh, they have somebody that's about 14 years old, say they have a heart murmur. And it's not unusual for a dying kid to have a sick family. A lot of it, it's genetics. Not always. Certainly not always. But sometimes it's genetics. So <clears throat> they will have six siblings. Sometimes those siblings can't get vaccinated. So you mean to tell me that they're not going to grant wishes to dying children because they can't and may not be able to get vaccinated. I, I can't speak for the the Austin Christel. I, she, I have, but I'm pretty sure that if at any point we, her, I, whatever, ever, ever, ever endorse them, in light of this, I can't speak for her, but consider me, no. I want nothing to do with them at all, with this show at all. I am done. Done, done, done. And I'm very happy that uh, for a while I was juggling. I, I remember... Uh, asking someone significant to me once if I should do St. Jude's or the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And I went with St. Jude's. Now I'm very happy that I did, but I think I've done Make-A-Wish stuff in the past, and I wanted to clarify that I no longer wish to. All right, dumbies. Even dumber than that, they, they have to be at least mildly funny. Oh, my God, friends. Changing America. Most Americans, according to The Hill... Don't know where the Grand Canyon or Niagara Falls are, according to a new poll. What? Now, I can understand some people messing up the Grand Canyon. A survey. I get it. I, because of the way it runs, I get it. But listen to this. Barely half of 2,000 Americans knew where the key landmarks like the Grand Canyon are located. Some people thought Illinois Shawnee National Forest was in Ireland... And Ontario and New York State's Niagara Falls was in Iceland. Now, see, when I first saw this, I'm like, oh, they're, they're just nitpicking. Some people, Niagara Falls, they forgot about New York. They thought about the, the more beautiful side, which is on the Canadian side. <coughs> and they said Canada. And I was going to be mildly forgiving. No. Iceland! Our educational system does not prioritize grade students to know where national landmarks are. Well, it looks like maybe we should. Okay, many people believe the Grand Canyon was in Colorado. That can be forgiven. But, the, man, this, some of these is just horrible. 64% of the people thought they knew the right answers to this. But only 51% managed to identify the Redwood Forest as being located in California. 35% thought the Shawnee National Forest is in Illinois. Only 35%, I should say. New Yorkers and Canadians should be familiar with their shared landmark. Now, see, that's why this makes it even worse. As Miss Deb guarantees it a spot in the Dove's Cap of the Month award show here. I'm in Ohio, so, you know, I don't know. We think of Niagara Falls quite frequently. It comes up, you know, it's, it's a major issue here, even though it's a bit of a drive. It's still close enough that you hear about it all the time. New Yorkers and Canadians should be familiar. In Buffalo, New York is where, of course, the, uh, well, it's, it's all right, Niagara Falls, New York, but right near Buffalo is where um, the American side of the falls is. New Yorkers... And Canadians should be familiar, it says, with their shared landmark, the Niagara Falls. While 32% of respondents were able to answer the question correctly, sadly, 22% thought that the Mystic Waterfalls between Province of Ontario and New York State was in Iceland. How in the hell could you be from New York? If I knew where to send a dunce cap to the person who was in New York but thought that the... Niagara Falls was in Iceland. It probably would have been sent. But fortunately for them, I do not. Moving on, and I, I want to give a shout out to his, his gab name. Is This name took too long. And I've been encouraging people to follow the show, The Correct Views on Gab. Um, this idiot said that 
I watched part of your show and you go from topic to topic. Yeah. You mean like it's laid out in the description? What the topics are going to be? That... When idiots start going to Gab, you know that Gab is growing. I, again, I have had major issues with shadow banning on uh, uh, Facebook. Just cancel my account. Uh, YouTube buries me under a rock, and nobody sees me even if they type my name in, and Deganji isn't that common. Um, it's it's frustrating, friends. It's frustrating. Hey, see you then. Gross! CNN anchor eats a cicada sushi roll live on TV. Now... Again, this all comes from the lie. The lie that man is warming the planet. It might be nice if I stay on camera. Man is not warming the planet. This has been proven over and over and over and over and over again. And it, again, I, I'm not going to go over it. You can search the correct views. YouTube.com slash the correct views. Type in global warming. Um, <clears throat> the quick one. That I point everyone to if you want to want to know what I'm talking about about this being proven. Go ahead and look at how warm things were prior to when these little charts start. For instance, I I did I DJed uh, Tuesday Wednesday depend on when you're seeing this Tuesday night I DJed and I started this thing called Trivia Tuesdays and we give stuff away if you have the right answer. And everybody's complaining because it was 96 degrees in Canton, Ohio. Oh my God, the global warming, the global warming. Do you know when the hottest recorded temperature was in Ohio? 1934. It was 113. Well, man was warming the planet from, from 1910 to 1930. And I go, yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. All right, so... <coughs> dying. This carries on here because Ocasio-Cortez and many others, cow farts as I call her, it's just not sustainable for the cows to grow the cows. We can't keep growing the cows. All right. Cow flatulence is not warming the planet. The actions of man is not warming the planet. Do you know they found out that if mankind died off tomorrow, if they all, all mankind died off tomorrow, there would be a one to one and a half percent change in the atmosphere within a hundred years. And that's it. And that's the most that it would ever be. We, remember that the next time they give you this, this facade about how everything's doomed and due to mankind. It's absolutely not true at all. Not to mention, if mankind disappeared, uh, so would everything else, because the nuclear power plants would all melt down, since there would be nobody to prevent them from doing so, which now mankind has to exist forever. Otherwise, you know, all of the storage sites we have will go red, and there won't be life on Earth. In a disgusting segment on CNN Monday, it says the network's anchor, Brianna Keller, who is an idiot, was joined by sushi chef Boonle, to push the trendy eat the bugs agenda. Meanwhile, the people pushing it are eating lobster and prime rib. The globalists have been increasing pro-bug pro propaganda in the past few years, allowing the EU to lead the charge before eventually introducing the concept to America. Because, again, whenever anything gets to this country, usually it's on the way down right after it's done. Like, uh, the body piercing... It went from, and I had my eyebrow pierced, it got it pulled out doing a music video, ow. Um, I've got a few things pierced, um, obviously, ears pierced. Um, you got people putting holes in their cheeks with gauging out their faces. When things hit America, people get dumb. I have a keyboard tattoo on my arm, and I'm happy with it, I like it. We have rappers in the top 40 that look like the desk at high school detention with their tattoos. When things get to America, stupidity tends to take over the, uh, the art or the science or whatever it is. This is what we're seeing here. 
And it says you can watch as she eats this roll. You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and play it. That is better to do now that we have Fact Cam back, which is because of your donation to the correct views at Hotmail.com through PayPal. Now, I'm probably going to get an ad. Across the country, billions, trillions. Right. I didn't get an ad because nobody ever watches CNN. They're just amazed that anybody even clicked this. The computer's like, oh, look, what? <laughs> of cicadas are making their appearance after spending the last 17 years underground and no one is more excited to see these winged insects make their debut than my next guest you cannot wait to put them on his menu that oh, is right oh, joining me now is bun Lai. he is a recipient of, of the white house champion of change award he is also the chef of mia's which is the first sustainable what do you think about this i, I think my favorite whitney houston lyric and culinary curiosity about this, but I'm really just so one thing. <laughs> I don't know if I <laughs> spread it right out. I don't know that I really want to have to wear gloves to eat but the bun. My husband is like not going to kiss me for a week. <laughs> can can I grab those? Put in... Oh no, no, I was going to have you just use those. Oh, here no. it is. I got it. I got it. It's... Once you click a CNN video, you're trapped forever. All right, yeah, I'm yeah. scared of this. <laughs> okay. Oh, the crunch. Mm. Do I have a wing hanging out of my mouth? Mm. Oh, it's literally in there. <laughs> it's not a wing, it's a it's a leg. <laughs> hey, that's actually quite delicious. What is it? Okay, I'm not gonna read the whole article. <clears throat> that's all you need to see. Now again, am I grossed out? No, I, I would do that on a dare. My first wife and I were in uh, Los Angeles and they had bug suckers. Oh. It was like 1996. They had bug suckers, but it was like six bucks or something. And I was like, I'm not spending six dollars on a damn bug sucker, so I didn't do it. Um, I've eaten ants before on a dare. I mean, they, you know, the people used to grow up and go outside. I understand that's a strange concept, but that's not what I'm. This is about selling you the lie that we need to eat bugs in order to save the planet, which is entirely untrue in every way. It's also being sold, if you don't want to do it, you're a racist. You're a racist because lots of people of, of different nationalities, when they're not mean old whitey, they, they eat bugs every day. I don't care. I don't care. If they're happy with their culture, then let them eat their bugs. If they don't want to eat bugs, then legally, legally, come on into the country. Come, we'll eat steak together. All right. That doesn't mean I hate you if you're eating bugs next door and, you know, you know, I don't like you eating steak. Okay, well, then enjoy your bugs. But don't try to tell me that you're racist. You're racist if you don't like chitlins. Now, I've always wanted to try them personally, mainly on the, on the what the hell are you doing concept. But for those of you that cling to that logic, and we just, that's another whole side of the dumdy here. Let me remind you of something, okay? Let me remind you of something very easy here. The reason that African Americans originally ate chitlins was because the people who made them slaves and who owned them would take all of the good meat from the chickens and make it for themselves. And they would save the entrails for the slaves. So don't, I mean, if, if, if you like it, you like it. I don't care. I'm just saying, don't say that it's racist if you don't like chitlins. Chitlins were given for the worst possible reasons in the world. History hurts, doesn't it? Um, Cloud World Artist Sells Invisible Immaterial Sculpture for 18 grand. It, that, that's a real picture of the sculpture right there. I'm back. There's three things happening at once here, and I didn't let this win the dunce cap of the month because it was simply too popular of a story by the time I was going to get to it at the end of the month. But I'm going to tell you why something this stupid can happen. It's, it's, it's nothing. And I'll read the story in a minute, but this is how this happens. It's the same way that something like uh, Drake would be called good music. If you can sell the idea that something which anybody can do 
I mean, and real, two kids in their bedroom make better music than Drake does, even within his own genre. But if you can sell that as genius, then you can make people feel like they've really accomplished something, when in fact they have not. That's why drugs are so popular, because they make you feel great even though you haven't really accomplished anything. That is what's going into spending $18,000 for art that isn't there. There's something else. The pretentious need that people have to find beauty in a person left an article of clothing, a shoe or purse or something, on the floor on an art museum once. Left it behind on accident while looking at another piece of art. And people were walking by all day looking at it, commenting on what a striking work of art it was, the way it was placed on the floor. Why? Not because they were really moved by whatever it was, it's ridiculous. But because they wanted to feel like they were in tune with something. In other words, they wanted to have an experience which lifted them up without actually having to do anything. By saying, well, I could go home and do that. If you look at a great work of art, I don't care what it is. I don't care if it's uh, the Mona Lisa or if it's H.R. Uh, Giger. <clears throat> you can't just go home and do that. But if you can sell this notion that something like Drake is somehow worthy of anything other than a sniff, if you sell the idea that you can sell nothing as a great work of art for what it means on a deeper level, then you can make people feel like they've achieved something without really doing anything, haven't you? An Italian artist has managed to sell one of his works for thousands of dollars. The piece, however, isn't much to look at. In fact, it's nothing at all. The Lo Sono I Am sculpture. Now, again, this, this is another thing. Let's give a little stab at religion. What's the name of God? God said that his name was the great I Am. That I, he said, tell the people that I am. What is my name? I am. As in, I am the reason you are here. I am the creator. I am the answer to your prayer. On and off, I am. In other words, this guy is trying to say that God is nothing. At least I, th I think that's his, one of his reasons for naming it. Created by a 60-year-old, 67-year-old artist. Give the dunce cap to whoever wrote this for calling him an artist. Salvatore Garou recently sold at an auction for 18 grand despite not physically existing. The non-existent sculpture <clears throat> apparently gets its value from Garou's description of the empty space. Not as nothing, but as a vacuum. Okay, for one thing, it's not a vacuum. Because if it was a vacuum, it would pull things in. There was an actual meaning to the word vacuum. <clears throat> it's not just a pithy word. The vacuum <clears throat> is nothing more than a space full of energy. That's not what a vacuum is. So he's wrong there. And even if we have empty in it, there is nothing left, according to the Heisenberg uncertainty principle, that nothing has weight, the artist claimed. Nothing has a weight. Therefore, it has energy that is condensed and transformed into particles, that is, into us. He also claimed that the empty spaces where he designates an immaterial sculpture exists are filled with energy. When I decide to exhibit an immaterial sculpture in a given space, that space will concentrate a certain amount of density of thoughts at a precise point. Creating a sculpture that, <clears throat> from my title, will only be take on the most various forms. After all, don't we shape God after something we've never seen? I am. You get the stab. I, I get on this one, it was too popular to give out, and then you also have to ask, do you give it to the guy that made it or the guy that bought it? So we've only got three stories left, and then, of course, the third one's the winner. This one's going to be quick. I hear something in the distance up. 
I'd be a mooing cow. I wish I had the behind the scenes queen. We need cows. We need all kinds of noises. Victoria's Secret says goodbye to angels in an attempt to redefine sexy. The angels are their models. Now, you don't redefine sexy. Some people may think that, for whatever god awful reason, that Beyonce is pretty. Or they may think, I don't know, uh, oh, what's her name? Oh, the other terrifying, um, no, oh, the one that Donald Trump, she's in Greece, played Rizzo. Anyway, you might think she's pretty. That's fine. You, you might even be messed up enough to think that I'm attractive. Men are in, probably not. Very, very unlikely, but no. Maybe? No. Okay. That is not the normal sexy. Guess what? I don't deserve to be on magazines true. I don't. Some people just don't. There, I said it. That includes me. But you can't say that. It's shaming. It's shaming. Why? Why am I shaming a fat person by calling them fat? Maybe they're twice as intelligent as I am. They're just fatter. Which is pretty fat. But the idea that because somebody has a great body, those who don't should feel shamed is ridiculous. And if you do feel shamed, it's probably because you know that you don't look 